Tonight on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime, it's region championship night across the bluegrass. Our game of the week takes us to Corbin for the Class 3A Region 4 final between the host and eighth ranked Red Hounds and number nine Bell County. In another top 10 battle, number one and defending state champion Pulaski County hosts the fifth ranked North Laurel Jaguars. In Class A Region 4, number seven Pikeville hosts Hazard and number two Belfry looks to win yet another region championship when it hosts the Lawrence County Bulldogs. We are live on Mountain Lions and Sports Overtime starts now. Welcome into yet another edition of the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime. I'm Josh McKinney. I'm not alone this week. <laughs> Lauren Cash decided to rejoin the sports department. Ha, ha, ha. And Lauren, lucky for you, you're stuck with me tonight. Hey, my best friend is not a sports fan, and she had decided to get <laughs> married in the middle of November during high school football playoffs. He has not no idea. my problem. No idea. <laughs> Region championships going on all across the bluegrass tonight with each of the six classes down to its final four. But football was not the only thing going on tonight. That's right. The Kentucky Wildcats, the basketball team at home tonight, trying to improve to four and O. Oh. Number two, Kentucky hosting Wright State, trying to stay perfect and improve to four and O oh on the year. Cats on the break. Tyler Ulis. Showing his ball skills, drives in the nice dish off to Derek Willis for the two down low. Kentucky by seven. Euless driving again, misses the tough runner. But look at Charles Matthews. Gets up and slams it in. Lead now eight. How about another assist from Euless? Down low to Scal LaBissier and Scal flexing his muscle with the two-handed dunk. It's now a double-digit lead. Isaiah Briscoe had a big game Tuesday versus Duke. Here the nice drive, the left-handed layup for two, but the play of the game comes from Alex Poitras. The steal at one end, all by himself at the other, and you knew that was coming. Rockin' Rupp Arena. We go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. The game was a little sloppier than fans may have liked, but the Cats get the win, 78-63 over Wright State. Kentucky now 4-0. Yeah, he's just got to build on it. I mean, he had a dunk that he wasn't athletically ready for. He had the last rebound he tried to grab with one hand. He got beat on the bounce a bunch. But to get a double-double and start down this road, let's go. Now, Marcus Lee had a double-double against Duke. He didn't quite have a double-double today. Now, you tell me. I mean, again, that's sit here and lie to you and tell you, oh, this was the greatest thing, and we got... The Wildcats now 4-0 in the year will return to action on Tuesday back at Rupp Arena. Lauren, you'll be there. I They'll will. welcome in the Boston Terriers. Tip-off set for 9 o'clock on the SEC Network. The Cats have never lost to the Terriers, winning all four previous meetings, including last season when UK won 89-65. Well, coming up, we turn our attention finally to some high school football and regional championships. Yeah, and it all starts with our game of the week, number 9 Bell County at number 8 Corbin. How about some fans in the stands? Tonight's t-shirt toss out sponsored by Eastern Kentucky University. On the western edge of the coverage area, Pulaski County fans enjoying some maroon shirts as on sports overtime shirts as they cheer on their maroons. Highlights of Pulaski County and North Laurel coming up in a bit. Pulaski County, tonight's fans in the stands sponsored by Eastern Kentucky University. Now that we have gotten basketball out of the way, we can now focus on the fun stuff. Yeah, the good stuff. Seven region championship games tonight featured at least one coverage area team, and two of those games featured two teams ranked in the mountain top ten. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that includes Class 3A Region 4, the final, which just so happens to be our game of the week. Number 8 Corbin at home versus number 9 Bell County. The Bobcats have won four straight. Their last loss was at Corbin, or at, at home versus Corbin on October 16th. You pike top play contender, scoreless game after one. Then Bell County changes that. Trayton Humphrey, 43 yards down the sideline, his 39th rushing touchdown of the year. Corbin comes back, though, down 6 0. Cameron Sizemore, the touchdown pass. Extra point makes it 7 6. Red Hounds, 14 seconds left in the first half. Peyton Collett, the Bobcats going to the air, steps up, hits a wide open. Isaac Muncie down the sideline, 36 yards for the touchdown. As we go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard, number eight Corbin with two second half touchdowns. The Red Hounds, Red Hounds hold off the Bobcats 21-14, the final score. 
Well, I'll tell you what, we put the ball on the ground, but we were lucky it bounced our way a little bit. And, you know, guys up front made some plays. And, and you know, like I said, it was a total team win. Uh, Drew had been sick all week in, in practice and, you know, come out and score big. I don't know how many touchdowns he got, but I know he got the game winning one. So, but, uh, you know, we played a great game, and, and they, Bell County did a great job too. All right, number two, Belfry hosting Lawrence County Class 3A Region 3. The Pirates got off to a hot start. Zondre Willis with the carry on the kickoff. He weaves around the Bulldogs before he's brought down around the Pirates' 45-yard line. Nice field position for Belfry. Lawrence County looking for a touchdown, but the pass intended for Robert Dalton is picked off by the Pirates' Devin Varney, giving possession right back to Belfry. U-Pike top play contender in the first half. Lawrence County makes the same mistake, pass intercepted by Belfry's TJ Dotson. He'll take it all the way for the pick six, and we go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. Number two, Belfry rolls the Pirates back in the state semifinals, 52-12 over the Lawrence County Bulldogs. Bell County at Belfry. How about this score? The other side of the Class 3A bracket, John Lewis, the former YMT sports reporter, <laughs> said no one is beating Central in Class 3A. Well, John, I hate to tell you, but they lost in round three tonight. <laughs> Lexington Catholic blocked a potential game-winning field goal to beat the Yellow Jackets 14 13. Also in Class 3 on the West, Elizabethtown stays perfect. They defeat Caldwell County 32 to 27. Class 5A Region 4 final, North Laurel Jaguars and the defending 5A champs, Pulaski County. Jake Johnson with the point at the camera. U Pike top play contender, opening kickoff. Maroons kicking to the Jags. Tucker Sharp fields the kick but loses the football. There's a scramble for it. Jackson Mobley recovers it for Pulaski and takes it to the house. For six, extra point good. Nine seconds into the game, Pulaski up 7 0. Not the ideal start. Second quarter, North Laurel takes the 12 7 lead over Pulaski on this Cole McWhorter quarterback keeper. He had three on the night, two point conversion. Good. It's 14 7 North. Now, this was a weird first half of football. <laughs> All right, North Laurel had three onside kicks, two of them. They recovered and both of them led to scores. The Jaguars led 17-7 at half and we go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. Pulaski had only one possession in that first half, but in the second half, Maroon defense held when it needed to and the PC offense prevailed 28-24. The Maroons are region champs. Who would Pulaski County play? A big rivalry game for the Class 5A Region 3 Championship, Covington Catholic Visiting Highlands, Bluebirds won the regular season meeting 14-10, but this one not so close. Colonels fumble the ball, picked up by Highlands, and the fans, well, of course, as you would expect, they're loving it. And the Bluebirds capitalize. Austin Hergo, the end zone pass where Eric Miller comes down with a touchdown grab. Highlands rolls its rival to another region title, 44-22, the final over Covington Catholic. Staying on the scoreboards on the other side of the 5A bracket, Bowling Green rolled over Owensboro 41-12. And who will they play next week? Fern Creek, the one-point win over South Oldham 21-20, the final. So Pulaski County back in the region semis, a tough trip to Northern Kentucky to yes. face Highlands. That should be interesting. One quick mention. A phenomenal season by North Laurel, a season of first for them, completely, you know, first, second round game, first 11 win season. So much fun to cover them and follow <laughs> them this season with Coach Larkey and the Jaguars. To the entire Jaguars. game and lose that way, that's got to be heartbreaking. It was, it was tough. Seniors. Much more high school football to get to on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime, including a Class A District 8 rematch. Yeah, and in Bourbon County, a pair of unbeatens get together, each looking to keep its perfect season alive. Hey, I'm Trey Little. I'm a senior at Eastridge High School and you're watching Sports Overtime. Two familiar foes at the Class A level getting, getting together out in Howard Field and Pikeville, the number seven Pikeville Panthers and the Hazard Bulldogs. Class A District 8 rematch for the Region 4 final. Hazard at number seven Pikeville. We're gonna pick this one up in the second half and Pikeville's up 36 nothing already. Hand off to Derek Pugh. He's gonna take it about 30 yards. Panthers, they just keep driving. A handoff again to Pugh. We'll give them just exactly what they're looking for. Another touchdown, putting them ahead 43. Fourth quarter, and the Panthers are not letting up. Hand off to Evan Rhodes. He looks for an opening and will run it around the outside and into the end zone, adding another score for the Panthers. But the Bulldogs aren't leaving with an empty score. Less than one minute left in the game. Cole Ratliff with the touchdown pass. Bulldogs will leave with six points as we go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. Pikeville rolls it away, rolls their way into the state semis 50 to six over Hazard. Pikeville will get either unbeaten Paris playing in its first region final since 94 
or unbeaten. Paintsville, Paris grabbed, was playing well early, but the Tigers, well, they're not leaving Bourbon County with a loss. Cash Daniel, right up the gut, the future Kentucky Wildcat for the touchdown. How about a UPAC top play contender now to the air? The pass is tipped by a oh. Paris defender, but Paintsville grabs it, goes into the end zone for another score. And it's not a Paintsville highlight without this guy, Kent Phelps. Around the right side, down the sideline, into your living room, all the way to the house. Paintsville stays perfect and will host Pikeville next week in what should be a fantastic atmosphere in Johnson County. 48-28 the final over previously unbeaten Paris. Let's check out what's going on on the opposite side of the Class A bracket. Beachwood gets Holy Cross out of Louisville 21 to 9. And who will they play? Russellville. They beat, they beat Bethlehem 41 to 20. In Northern Kentucky, Johnson Central battling the Scott Eagles. Scott's first appearance in the region championship in quite some time. First corner, Danny Fitzgerald hooks up with Roberto London. 49-yard touchdown pass for the Eagles. Johnson Central, though, would battle back and tie the game and then pull within a touchdown. And wouldn't you know it, Jordan Blanton scores a touchdown as time expires. Johnson Central wins its first region championship since 2006. They will be on the road next week. They beat Scott 27-26. Lauren, who would Johnson Central play? They will play Wayne County. They, they knock out our coverage area team, the Knox Central Panthers, 42-14. to South Warren showing support tonight for the Doolin family. Very classy move there by the Spartans. And this is how they start the game. Josiah Roby takes the handoff and is promptly met by Austin McLean. Spartans ready to go. Saul Brady takes the handoff and watch closely. Ball pops out right there. Dimitri Bibb recovers it and takes it to the one. And Ryder Litton, well, he does the rest. Punches it in from one yard out. 7-0 South Warren. How about some more? from the Spartans. You know, they're kind of still a new team out in Bowling Green. McElwain takes the handoff, finds the end zone, 14-0 Spartans. New team, but they're really good. You know, South Warren, they're going to get tricky right here, the handoff. But no, it's the flea flicker. Litton finds Franklin Williams all alone, 21-0. Oh, all never works. South Warren scoreboard time. Spartans blow past Franklin Simpson, 30 Four seven, the final. Also in Class 4A on the West, Shelby County 12 and one now in the year. The Rockets beat the John Harden Bulldogs on the road, 44 to 14, the final. There, much more to come on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime. But as we go to break, as always, here's a look at this season's final Alice Lloyd College Mountain Top 10. Time now for our McDonald's Student Athlete of the Week. Brooke Hobson is a senior at Johnson Central High School where she has a 4.0 GPA. She is a member of the Student Council and Secretary of the Spirit Club. She is also a four-year member of the Varsity Cheerleading Squad. Congratulations, Brooke. Tonight's McDonald's Student Athlete of the Week. Time now for some Long John Silvers, our catch of the day. Back out to our game of the week. Bell County's Isaac Muncy wide open down the sideline, makes the grab, scoots into the end zone for the Bobcat touchdown just before half. Bell, though, would fall to Corbin 21-14 in the Class 3A Region 4 Championship. But nonetheless, Isaac Muncy, our Long John Silvers catch of the day. Time now to get you set for this weekend with a Saturday slate sponsored all season long by Union College. Now, Lauren, the majority of Kentucky football fans will get what they've been calling for for weeks tomorrow when redshirt freshman Drew Barker will get his first career start versus Charlotte. Yes, last week against Vanderbilt, Barker completed five of eight pass attempts for 60 yards with one touchdown and one interception. Head coach Mark Stoop says he's excited to see his QB play and how he has developed. I believe he's further along, as you would expect. You know, he, I feel good about him uh, right now um, because of the work that he's put in throughout the year. And, uh, uh, you know, I know he didn't get as many game reps as we'd like, but he's gotten quite a few practice reps and he's been getting more and more confident and more and more comfortable. So, uh, you know, I, I definitely feel like he's at a point right now where I'm excited to watch him play. 
All right, Kentucky back home tomorrow night under the lights when Charlotte comes to town. The 49ers sporting just a 2-8 and eight record. The Wildcats 4-6, and six, but have lost five in a row. Kickoff set for 7.30 p.m., and you can watch it on the SEC Network. Despite its recent struggles, Kentucky is a 24-and-a-half point favorite in tomorrow's game. Alabama is not even as big a favorite against Charleston Southern tomorrow. To put that into perspective. Noted. Also going on tomorrow, the other kind of football, the Union men's soccer team, earned the 16th seed in the NAI National Tournament and will host its first round game tomorrow afternoon. The Bulldogs welcome in the Lions Scots from Arkansas. Union has a record of 16-1 and 4 on the season. Lion is 14-3. And one. And a couple of teams on the road. Moorhead State closes out its season in New York at Mar Marist against the Red Foxes. And the Eastern Kentucky Colonels also away from home playing their season finale at Eastern Illinois. Four state semifinal games next week involving coverage area teams. Six teams left, I do believe, all in the Mountain Top 10. Mm -hmm. We've got Pikeville at Paintsville for Class A. Uh, 3A, we've got Corbin at Belfry. 4A Johnson Central at Wayne County and 5A Pulaski County at Highlands. Great, Should be a lot of fun. Great job, Josh. You just pulled that right <laughs> off the I can head. remember something sometimes. <laughs> you will, though, be at Highlands in northern Kentucky next yes, week. Yes, next Friday. You know, I, I'm from Louisville, so Thanksgiving with the fam, then drive myself drive myself up to northern Kentucky. That's how you drive? <laughs> That's how I drive. <laughs> but... <laughs> Whatever. Go ahead. There you have it. Another <laughs> sports overtime in the books. You will be back tomorrow night for you sports guys overtime get me some Saturday more. night with Jamie. I will not be here. Yes, bye, Josh. <laughs> and a lot to get to tomorrow. We mentioned Kentucky football, Union soccer. I'll be there. And the Union basketball teams, both the men's and women's. I'll also be there, too. And in this week's Sports Overtime Rewind, we'll look back at Pikeville's run to three consecutive state titles in the late 80s. So you'll You'll definitely want to catch that. First time ever that happened, I believe. Correct. First to do it. Should be a lot of fun as always. State semis next week, as we mentioned. Teams trying to get to Bowling Green. You'll also be there in a couple weeks. Woo! But until then, from everyone in the sports and production departments, have a good night. I get to do fun stuff.